What do you reckon then, mate? Winning, 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 winning. Yeah. We might need to uh, ring the bank up and arrange an overdraft, mate, I we're, think. We're doing all right, though. Wow. Let's see how we get on. Still, still, still shocked about this car. Yes, yes. What shocked me even more is I've arrived in this morning and it's no longer on the back of my no, truck. No, no. Chris has pulled it straight in and got it on the ramp. We've actually had some, we've got some, a beautiful high value item yeah. incoming for next week. And but it's got to be picked up today. It's got to be picked up today. So Chris has got this in and got it up on the ramp. So a 2023 for £2,100. Oh, no. Yeah. It's a shock they let us have it, really. Isn't I still it? don't get it, really. Yeah. yeah. The amount of, I mean, out of that little bit of video that I first played. Did you just have one bid on it? One bid. You saw it, didn't you? Yeah. And you was like, one, you said yeah. to me. One bid and that was it. Yeah. That's cheap. One bid. I think other people bid up to that amount. But we initially won yeah. it for 50 quid less than what I put in. Yeah. But you will see in that reel, there was actually that BMW. We was bidding on that at the well, time. Well, quite a few, wasn't we? And, uh, yeah, there's other cars in there that are going to come to light later yeah. that we did buy that we yeah. didn't end up with, if that makes sense. Anyway, yeah. back to the Fiat. It's terrible, really, because I'm aimed at you for doing a Fiat 500. And then... But this was cheap, it was... And it is a hybrid. It is a hybrid, it's a one litre, we've never had one. And it's, now it's got back, I don't think it's as bad as it looks. Like, that fog light, is not broke, no. it's the bumper. But there is also method to the madness, isn't there? Because we did a Fiat 500 for young Molly, Yeah. but it had loads of people saying they're looking for a Fiat 500. That's right. But it wasn't for sale. I've never struggled to sell no. a Fiat 500. So it's like, ever. well, if one comes along and it's worth the money, we'll buy it. We'll buy it. <clears throat> but as all the time I've ever bought these Fiat 500s and bought cars, they've, they'd never let you have a car like that for that sort of money. No, no. Now, getting on, I think we'll get back to this damage in a minute. Let's just go round the side of it. It's and got a few uh, marks it's got it. a few marks around it. So straight away, it is going to want a lot of paint, this car, because. The wing needs a little repair there, and then it has got a key scratch running mm -hmm. all the way down this quarter panel. The back end, I noticed, yeah. there's a couple of scuffs. Yeah. Typical, isn't it? My uh, watch starts ringing. Um, the boot lid actually looks all right, tailgate. Yeah. yeah. That quarter panel looks all right. Not until well, we get all the stickers off. Yeah. And then I did mention this to Chris because I've actually started collecting parts for yes. this car. Yes. I said, shall I get a wing? And he said, no, he's going to do a bit of a repair on he's that. He's going to need a repair on that outer seal anyway, isn't it? It's it is. A bit of damage. And if I get you to hold that camera. Yeah, sure thing. The, oh. the pictures, I haven't knocked that off. No, I? it's still the, rolling. The pictures <laughs> yeah. of this car, the wheel, was actually like that. And that's how the pictures were from Copart. So you can see it's actually snapped the knuckle there and... Well, it's destroyed, and you yeah. can see the lower yeah. arms ripped out of the engine bed. And in a previous video for the BMW, I did mention that I had a mint engine bed underneath all that BMW stuff. Yeah. I've got the bed for it already. Should we go up in the air? You can do, Rob. We won't go too high, because I want to get inside the car in a minute, but I think the... I mean, the damage is, it is horrible, isn't it? You can see yeah, it's, it's, bed. it's ripped the bed out. It's yeah, caused all shaft. sorts of damage, yeah. yeah. And this drive shaft, little hollow tube. Yeah. Because it's yeah. a one litre hybrid, yeah. this car. A lot of the stuff's going to be the same as a, a 1.2 500, but the drive shaft and the hub is not. So coming down just quickly, get to the inside, because we want to get on with this. It's stuck on the ramp. Yeah. We need to get it mobile. And I, I rang up for a brand new drive shaft for it because I was struggling to find one. It was 700 quid from Fiat. I was like, yeah, we can't, Crazy, we can't do that. We'll have to work around it somehow. This is the nicest looking Fiat 500 inside I've actually seen. And even though it's a 23, it's still an early shape on a 72, right. which we're lucky, because right. the bits for a brand new, I mean, the, the headlights are inside the bonnet, aren't oh, they, on they, the they, new I, one? I don't really know. But look at that inside there. All the bags are gone. Yeah. Should guess what? Yeah, but guess what? Go on. I've got the airbag set out there in the truck. I've picked one of them up for it as well. 
Well, that's good, isn't it? Shall we just get it back up in the air and make a start on it? Yeah, I can well, see the lockers there. Go, you've got a car to go and collect. Yeah. So I shall get the bumper off and start stripping that suspension, I guess. That's in a couple of hours. So, so we'll get a bit done. I can help you, yeah. Yeah, we'll get a bit done. Like and, a uh, nut. Oh, well, that's uh, Brucey bonus. Was well. down as a non-runner, but I'm not overly overly worried about it because there's no damage on the bottom of the engine. No, and as you always say, Rob. It was running all right when it crashed. It certainly was. I reckon this has gone across a curb. Do you? Yeah, because that back, that front wheel's cracked as yeah. well. And uh, yeah. that has blown all the bags out. Yeah. All right, mate. All right, mate. We crack on. Yes, crack on. Not a great deal I can show you on this particular car vertical report because the car is so new. So there's there's limited information available out there for this car. So Fiat 500, petrol, 2023. And then I have just briefly had a quick run through this check to familiarise myself with it before I recorded it. And I've had another pleasant, pleasant surprise with this car. It just gets better and better. So odometer, clearly highlighted in green, that's all good. Financial, all green, that's good. Scrolling a little bit further up, we've got damage, clearly highlighted there in amber. Now, when we go to the damage section, we can see this vehicle was damaged. The vehicle was marked as an insurance write-off. And when we go down to the category, first, 2024, N repairable, non-structural. Now, I actually thought that this was a category S. So I'll take that any day of the week. Really, really happy with that. Also, don't forget, you get a massive 20% discount now off your car vertical check when you use the code SR20. You've got your market value on here, your emissions and taxes. So average market value, 14000 And it will say the lowest price one is currently advertised for is 13891 Average 14, highest 147. We're going to be happy with a lot less than that lower end of that because this car, you know, was an absolute steal. Emissions, taxes and fees, specs and equipment, and then, of course, your financial and legal. But all of those are green and there's no issues there whatsoever. I want to thank Car Vertical once again for the continued support on the channel. Don't forget to benefit from that huge discount off your check. Use the code up on screen now or click the link in the description where it will automatically apply your discount. Right, so back to the waffle just for a second. Full Fiat 500 airbag kit. Driver's airbag, knee airbag, dashboard with airbag, two seat belts and a module. Can I fit them in two hours before I head off? And can I beat Chris removing a subframe and fitting a new one? Oh, you definitely can, I reckon. He's in there. It's been a long time since I've done a Fiat 500 airbag kit. But I just said to Chris, I know that I can do this whole airbag kit with just my little blue point set. So I'm actually going to do it up on the ramp while Chris is working underneath it. He's having no, a mooch uh, around there. No money. No. But um, where's that key that come with this car, Rob? I'll just need it a minute. I'll put it out here in case the door's locked. When Snack. I... Hey? Snack. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, under the seat. You're... Is it for this car? Well, it's Fiat key. It only come with one. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding. No. There you go. <laughs> how no lucky, money, though, how good, lucky is that? Why yeah. is that under the seat? I don't know, but it's under the passenger seat and some parking tickets. I need one of these left in here, mate. I've There's got to move the steering parking wheel. Parking tickets by the dozen in here. Yeah, unbelievable. I did notice them in there. Right, let's get on with this race. I'm going to be honest, a little bit excited here. When did I last do a Fiat 500 airbag kit? It has been that long, I genuinely can't remember. But of course, it is like riding a bike and it all comes flooding back. They are such a simple, easy little car to work on. And that's why I love them so much. Over to Chris. Straight in there, getting the wheels removed, drive shaft nuts undone. Everything's got to come off the front of this car. Chris did say it might even need a little tug. So got most of that off, back in the car. And I'll continue on here, steering wheel, stalks. I did fiddle around underneath here, under the cowling for a long time, trying to find out what screws they were and they were actually missing. And back onto the front and Chris is getting that driver's side stripped out and I think we're ready to actually have a look at it. But 
I think we're pretty equal in the race at the moment. Well, I don't know what Rob's up to in there, but that's me halfway there. That is one engine bed and suspension leg removed. So, I did put the timer on there because people often ask. I, I can't remember what it was on when I started though, so we'll have to look at that. But yes, so, pretty much ready to pop that drive shaft out when uh, when we have the new one. I don't really want to take it out yet, else it'll be dripping oil, but as you can see, we are pretty much there. So how are you doing up there, mate? Hello. <laughs> yeah, I'll show hey, you. How are you getting on? There not, you go. Not, not so bad. Mate, honestly, it's uh, I'm not making it up. It's been a long time since I've done one. I was trying to find the bolts, but we're pretty much, we're stripped out. I've got one more bolt up there, the glove box to remove. And obviously there's a few bolts behind the glove box and a bolt behind there. A pillar to come out, but very, very, very confined. I've got sweat on there. I might even have to take the out off in a minute, mate. <laughs> very, very confined space working in here, as you can see, with the seats in here. And I'm up on the ramp and Chris is down there. But I'm not asking for any special favours or head starts. No, no. But I think I'll get this out and then we'll stop the clock and have a coffee. Well, you've got to go, haven't you? Don't forget yeah. your uh, yeah, collection not books. Yeah. All right, mate. All right, mate. Yeah, I'll cut it there, shall I? So it's all positive. It is always positive because the dashboard's out and I'm ready to put the new one in. But I've made a bit of a boo-boo today. And for the first time in a very long time, Chris is jumping in that recovery mm. truck and he is going to pick a project up right. because I've messed up here. Well, I'll tell Does I've that mean I win by default? Well, you obviously you've won. <laughs> you can't carry on, mate, no, can you? Mate. I think we both pretty much stripped out at the same pace and same time. Yep. So we, we was doing all right there. That was a good race. But that is absolutely, as soon as Chris see it, he said, Rob, that's no good. Now, that is a facelift Mark II one, but you can see the difference. They're nothing alike whatsoever. That is completely different. I'll just lay that up there. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it at all. This one's twice the weight as well. Yeah. So it's obvious, I mean, that, even that gearbox mount's different, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, That's got a great the, big hump in it. The cutout for the uh, exhaust is different. Um, wishbones are different. It's just not going to do, mate. No, unfortunate. We've managed to find one of those on ASM, and I've just given the guys there a call. They've pulled it off their website, so we'll definitely be getting that. He's just having a look to see if he's got one of those legs and see if he's got actually any other parts for yeah, it as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I, am just, I think I'm just going to crack on and get that airbag fitted oh, and mate. airbag oh, kit mate. fitted yeah. while it's fresh. Get that yeah. fitted and then you can run and grab that car, I suppose. Yeah, OK, I'll do that. Anything else you wanted to add about this? No, I don't think so at this point in time, mate. No. I think we're... Um... A bit disappointing when that happens, isn't it? Yes. But it is what it is and we know as well now that they're different, don't we? So, yeah. Yeah, so we'll set 2021 20, onwards. 21, 22, 23, yeah. Mm. Oh, this well. is a 23, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, well. Right, let's get that airbag kit back in. I'm going to spare you all watching me on time lapse. So, here's a little before. Right, moving along, okay with this. But I think we're going to have a bit of a little bit of a problem here. Nothing that we can't overcome, but something I was not expecting. Now, we just watched me take that dashboard out on time-lapse. This is the new one, by the way. And I wouldn't normally have things like that sitting up there. But I've just put that up there for a reason. And that one, because... Once I went to put this dashboard back in, it wasn't apparent because it was all tied into the loom. But, guys, check that out. I mean, look how long that is. I have already, already unraveled that from up there behind the dashboard. And then if you go round to the main clock wiring harness, you can see I've just unwound all of that. And look, we've got a cut wire there that has been tied into the clocks itself. And then here, you've got another thick wire going to the ignition system. And that's also been cut. And I believe further back, there's actually another one in there that's been cut as well. Now, I am gonna step out quickly. I know a lot of you already spotted this. 
I know a lot of you would have already spotted it earlier. And if you're from London, then you'll know exactly what this car used to be. So you can see by the labels on there. And if I pull that boot lid down, it actually says search, book and drive. So I won't say the name of the company um, because I, d I don't know, I'm probably not allowed to. But basically it was a hire car. And the reason Chris found that key down there under the seat is because that's where they would have left it in this car and they have remote access to disarm, arm this vehicle, lock and unlock it. So I think the situation is there. Once this car's had an accident, they've had one of their technicians come out and they have literally just completely mauled out the... Like, cut out. They've definitely just cut it out because... They haven't even taped the end of the wires off. The remote start access system to this car, I think, has all been pulled out and has left us in a, possibly a little bit of a sticky situation because this was down as a non-runner. And although we got the ignition to come on earlier, it's done 20,000 miles. When I pushed the clutch down and turned the key, it did nothing. Now, I'm wondering, is it just the crash data or is it something to do with the fact that they've cut out their, basically their override system? I'm gonna put back as much of the dash as I can, and these particular wires I was just talking about in the, behind the speedo clocks there, they're not actually connected to anything and there's no brakes in them. So I'm gonna cut them off and actually clean it up and tape those up so that I can get all the clocks and stalks put back in, and then we'll try the ignition system on this, but, I've got a funny feeling that is going to cause us a few little problems. Let's carry on. That's it, basically. A little bit of loom. I've chopped it out and you can see. I've tidied it all back up and put it back to factory. There's no reason why we can't put them clocks back in now. They've not got to come back out again. There's no broken wires behind now. Right, getting a little bit more uh, invested into this now. And I've untaped the next load of wires. And I can see they're actually teed in to the key reader on the back of the ignition. And can you see, they've cut that white there and they've looped it out into a new loom. And then it's obviously gone to something, some sort of immobilizer or engine stop, stop it allowing the key. And then it's gone back in. But I bet if I was to unravel all that, they're actually disconnected there, aren't they? You can see they are, guys, they've been cut. So there, I think, lays one of our major problems. These two whites need to go back together in order to make that loop, make that hole again. So I am actually going to remove them and put a nice new connector in there and get it all taped up nicely. Fingers crossed, that would be the one that would stop it from running. But while I've been down here, I've just noticed <laughs> there's another one hanging out and this has been removed. So I'm going to get that out as well, make sure there's nothing in there that's been... You've got to try and rule all of it out, haven't you? Oh, look, there's another one there. Another great big wire, that one. Where's that one coming from? Again, look, you can see it's just tied in to the loom. I'm so sorry, I can't actually record, but look at the space I'm working in. There's, there's absolutely no way I can record here. I am gonna move all my tools so I can get in there and um, get all of this rectified, and fingers crossed, this is gonna be the problem. Again, I can only apologize for the stop start and the cut in here, but that's that one repaired. And before I turn the camera on, I've followed this one back, undone it all, and look, that's a huge earth there, I would say, wouldn't you guys? Being brown. And you can see, they've cut into it, spliced it. And at the other end, as you can see, they are not touching. So again, that's gonna be another issue, isn't it? So I'm, I'm just gonna cut this one away, join it up, and I think, that's gonna leave the little one down here, which I'm gonna follow back. It's gonna be exactly the same again, and I'm gonna get that done, and then I'll strip that off, and then we'll have a, another look at it. There's no point me keep stopping and showing you guys is there, but yeah, definitely, definitely not good and was never gonna run. Let's get that rectified. I was never gonna use this piece of time-lapse. What I done was wedged the camera up in the roof lining and then put a screwdriver underneath it to aim it. Now this bit of time lapse here is probably only 22 seconds, but I was actually lying down there for about 15 minutes and 
it, it was that awkward, I struggled to actually get back up. But it was repairing those wires, and I actually got there with both bits in the end, and I think they're fixed. Ta-da! <laughs> and we're there with it. Everything all back together, and I had to actually find two extra screws. I was fiddling around with that lower cowling for a long time earlier on in the video when I was time lapsing, you would have seen it. Kept thinking, what's under there? Because it was so tight. Is it a Phillips? Is it a Torx? So I was trying everything underneath there. And in the end, I asked Chris to pass me the torch. And I bent down and looked up there and the screws were actually missing. And that just confirms, doesn't it, that the hire company sent someone out to remove all of their stuff. You are probably going to notice... There's no steering wheel airbag in there, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. There's a lighter there. I tried using a solder stick. Um, yeah, steering wheel airbag, not a problem. Seat belts, I can't do them on this ramp. I just can't do them. That, it's not opening that well. I could probably get in there and get that one done, but is it worth it? I mean, it's only going to take an hour when I get it off the ramp. Right. There is why there is no drivers. Steering wheel, but I can put that in there. It'll probably look all right, but I'm not going to put a cream steering wheel in a black, a uh, cream airbag in a black steering wheel. But everything else, all back together, all of the wiring back to how it should be. And I've just chucked a jump pack on it. And this. Is working. So. I mean, it's got no exhaust on it. I'm just going to give it a go. Unfortunately, Captain Slow's not back yet. He's probably cruising along doing doing 50 in a 70, trying to get up the miles per gallon on my truck, saying, oh, why is he only getting 26 to the gallon? But um, he should be back soon. Right, 20,132 miles. Let's move this forward a little bit. fuel pump went boot open oh that's all lit up everything's working right you can hear the wipers going yes yes turned straight over and fired straight up that's enough I'm happy with that Oh, that, I'm so made, let me turn this round. I'm so made up there because I actually thought that's going to be a pain, that immobiliser. If you see how much wiring, I've actually thrown, thrown most of it in the bin now, but there's so many little bits of wiring and bits and bits, there's more of it here, that I've actually had to cut out of that, join up and re-tape. But I think, fingers crossed, that's it. It looks so much better already now with that airbag kit in it just makes it more complete we have just bought an engine bed we've managed to get one the exact one um play, the only place online we could find one asm and they're actually going to bring it out to us in the next day or two so we can get this one back on its feet get it running and driving and hopefully get it turned around and out the door i am pretty chuffed at what we got done in this video it is a shame that that engine bed turned out to be the wrong one but that's the way it goes and that is the way it goes with quite a lot of the builds you'll get stuff it'll be the wrong stuff slight variations slight changes the one of the newest projects we've got that's uh, coming to the channel very very soon another high value item and trying to find the parts for it is turning out to be a real real nightmare i never realized they changed the stuff. I thought, this is a facelift Fiat 500. So 65 reg on right up till the current car. But of course, this is a hybrid. They've modified things. It's a different engine. And I just took for granted it was going to be the same. And it turns out it didn't. Where I got the airbag kit, he's already agreed. He'll just swap the black one for the cream one with me. So we've got no problem there. I'm to and fro there quite often. 
and the new engine bed is on its way in. I just need to get on the phone and get a drive shaft arranged for it. Like I said earlier in the video, it was about £700 for a new one, so we definitely don't want to buy a new one for it. Right, I need to have a good clean up before Chris gets back. Dan's been here all day and even he just come over and asked me where Chris was. There's no hands free in my truck, so unfortunately we can't get hold of him. That's going to be the end of today's video. As usual, we do hope that you did enjoy it. Like I said, we've got some pretty exciting cars coming in, upcoming to the channel. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Again, you can follow us on Instagram for the little sneak peeks at Selvage Rebuilds. Chris on his personal one at Selvage Rebuilds Chris. Don't forget, like, subscribe and share, and we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.